A practical skill for entrepreneurs, marketers, and sales professionals is the ability to estimate the size of the prize or what kind of volume or revenue a new opportunity might yield. This is an early stage estimate that might better frame executive or lender expectations, help you understand whether your current manufacturing capacity is well suited to the opportunity, and it might even give you a rough idea of how much media budget would be proportionate to the opportunity. An example, I worked at a multi-billion dollar firm with manufacturing assets, R&D expertise, and materials technology to be able to knock it out of the park in the sports insole category. Then they calculated the size of that category, $50 million, full stop. Even if the firm managed to somehow generate, let's say 70% market share, that'd still be just a $35 million business. And they backed away. Why? Because their scale was much better suited to bigger opportunities. Think of a big firm as being like an oil tanker. Getting up to speed on the open ocean takes days. They burn so much fuel just getting going that short journeys aren't worthwhile. There are two very different ways of calculating market potential or the size of the prize. The first is a top-down estimate. We start at the biggest possible market size and then slice and dice and slice until we arrive at a figure that estimates which proportion of that market we might reasonably pursue. Let's say the widget market has an audited retail category size of $420 million in the applicable geography, say the USA. Then we adjust this up for the coverage factor. Let's say the audit firm captures 85% of the full market. That means 15% of the sales in that category go through unaudited channels, flea markets, garage sales, gray market. That suggests real total retail category sales are closer to $500 million. Now, we're a widget maker, not a widget retailer. We're interested in the wholesale market size. So if retailers take an average 50% margin, then the wholesale market generates $250 million a year in sales. Now, we want to compete in the eco-sensitive widget segment of that market say fair trade or non-GMO, is 20% of that category, then our relevant segment is just 20% of that $250 million or $50 million. And now we need to consider what percentage of that entire distribution channel our sales force and its partners could have access to. That's a very situation-specific factor, but no one reaches 100%. Let's say we can access 60% of that with our sales force. Not every customer we reach is gonna say yes either. So let's say we can sell 80% of our contacts on our echo sensitive widget. Are you keeping track? We're down to $50 million times 60% times 80% equals $24 million in relevant segment sales. And what's our share of that segment? We're not the only echo sensitive widget we're unlikely to get more than 50% share of segment. So our market potential is now down to $12 million wholesale sales per year if we perform very well. Of course, this won't take into account some relevant factors such as, sure, the echo sensitive segment is just 20% now, but in the lead market such as Sweden, it's now 50% of the category. Okay. Fair point. And that's why companies leap into new segments early. They're forecasting promising segment growth, but typically you won't make a profit for a while. Who do top-down estimates work best for? Typically, firms that have access to reliable market size data. We call it audit data. If they buy Nielsen share data as a consumer packaged goods firm or IMS prescription sales data if a prescription drug firm, these firms have the market size figures, and they tend to be savvy about segment sizes, distribution access, and even how fast a new brand or new entry can grow market share. They're usually seeking market potential for a growing segment of the market they're already competing in, or a very similar one. What if you're a much smaller firm, an entrepreneur, or 
if audit data isn't available, many business to business categories are not audited, then you must get more resourceful. Work from the bottom up. Say you're an entrepreneur. Evie wishes to sell a new high performance, all organic, phosphate free, grease cutting hand detergent to auto service depots across Canada. Consult the NAICS guide, search out the number of such outlets in the Scots trade directory. Let's say the total is 1,000 outlets. Split this into the 600 listed A outlets, which employ 10 plus employees, and the 400 B sized outlets, which employ five to nine employees. Interview a few managers at A outlets and B outlets to find out how much hand sanitizer they consume go through. Let's say four liters a week for the average A outlet, two liters a week for the average B outlet. That's a market potential of 600 outlets times four liters equals 2,400 liters a week for A, and 400 outlets times two liters a week equals 800 liters a week for B outlets. That's 3,200 liters a week. Now, we take an estimated 10% market share, or 320 liters a week, multiply it by the wholesale price we're expecting to gather, $6 a liter times 52 weeks a year, if it's not seasonal. Do the math, that's $100,000 a year in wholesale sales. So from hand sanitizer to laptop computers, there's no one perfect way of calculating market potential. It'll depend on the attributes and traits specific to the situation you're in. You can even do both and what we call triangulate middle ground to just check the numbers seem reasonable. Either way, learn how to calculate market potential. It's an important skill and these kinds of projects that you're going to be assigned to as a marketer are going to build your character and profile or potentially pull it down. Do your homework, look for the numbers, and estimate the size of the prize.